Good morning, gang. Welcome back to the 30 and 30. We're on the tail end and actually probably coming out of our latest uh, winter storm. Hopefully we get some snow totals for you today. Take a look and see what we really got. I'm going to guess anywhere between six to eight inches. Probably wasn't as bad as uh, we originally thought it was going to be, or at least the weather guessers thought it was going to be. But it's a beautiful morning out here, and I'm going to try once again to bring you along as I feed on the 30 and 30. This is number eight. Please don't die on me. Holy hey, is there any chance I can get some help? And that's number six. Number six is our newest calf, born yesterday, right here on the 30 and 30. And uh, they are still hanging out here in the corrals, getting to know each other. They've got about another 24 hours due in here, and then we'll be kicking them out. We've got a bunch of sorting to do because looking forward to this storm, uh, we combined a bunch of herds. We've gotten animals mixed up and they're all over the place. We're gonna be doing some sorting here probably over the weekend and getting that stuff all straightened out. But for now, we're heading out. We're gonna feed some animals. Just like the emus and the donkey here, we have pigs to feed, we've got cows to feed, we've got goats to feed. We got a little bit of everything to feed. But just like yesterday, we need to start by taking a look at our cows. Now, we come out and check the heifers right now during this storm about every two to three hours uh 24 hours a day we're making sure that these heifers are if they go into labor that they're able to have their calves that they're not going to have any problems that's our big worry right now these heifers are first time moms and most of them are about two years old so if they do have a calf sometimes it just slick and easy sometimes we've got trouble and we want to make sure that if we do have trouble that we're here to help out. So we like to walk through the heifers every single day. Now this is what threw us off yesterday. We came and walked through the heifers and boom, we're having a calf. All of a sudden, my whole game plan changes for the day. Obviously we still get to, got to get people fed and calves fed and cows fed and all that stuff. But, and definitely throw off my filming plan for the day. That's for sure. 30 and 30 is very liquid, very flowing changes all the time but I guess that's what makes it fun because I always try to bring you guys what could be considered the most interesting part of my day and uh, sometimes it can be just feeding look at those calves you guys are cute yeah Hi, how are you? Are you friendly? Are you gonna be my friend? Maybe. <laughs> All right, here come some moms. Worried about what I'm doing. <laughs> Go get your baby. You're fine. <laughs> these are the <laughs> these are the three moms right here. They're all caught them out of place, out of position. They were probably just getting a drink or something. Taking a peek in the barn here. Nothing going on, which means that we're a go for a good old fashioned feeding video. And of course, throughout the day, we're gonna be checking on those heifers, making sure they're okay. So there's still a pretty good chance that uh, this video could make a left-handed turn somewhere around here. Not that there's anything wrong with left-handed turns, but it's weird. And most 
of the time, left-handed turns go against traffic, and that's why I like to use them as an example for something that's not quite right, but, you know, if you're left-handed, no offense. We're up here in our tractor. This is a 6420. We've got it hooked up to our male feeder, so the first thing we're going to do is go out and get the cows fed. Now, I checked on them uh, a couple hours ago just to make sure everybody was okay in there, but things could change, and our goal this morning is actually to feed them out of the uh, shed that they've been basically living in for the last couple of days. With the weather, they've been hiding out. We know we have one calf in there. Obviously, we've seen it and made sure it's okay. But that shed is a little tricky, and there could be another calf hiding in there that we don't even know about or haven't seen yet. So our goal is to feed and draw the rest of the cows out of the shed, hopefully giving us a chance to kind of snoop around and see if there's anything going on. Uh, 130 has had her calf. That's that cute little girl that we've seen floating around. Uh, she's also the one that we treated for scours, so I'd like to get a look at her this morning. Uh, but also, number 137, uh, yesterday was looking a little peaky, so she might be getting pretty close also. Sunglasses. There we go. All right. Let's head off here. We'll grab ourselves a bale. We have our bales that we brought out uh, before the storm. We're still trying to use those up. So we're gonna grab one of those and get it out, feed it to the cows. How's that one look? That one looks good. That looks like a very yummy bale. Quite a few tools on the ranch that make our lives a lot easier. The AeroQuip Corrals is a huge one for us, but also one that we use almost every single day is our Hustler Feeder. Now this thing, before we had it, obviously we had to do, make do, but now that we've got it, I don't know how we fed without it. The Hustler feeder allows us to lay a bale back out almost exactly as how it came from the field in the first place, putting it right back into a windrow and able to let the cow, we're not grinding anything up, we're not smashing anything, nothing's getting broken. Uh, these cows get to eat pretty much about as pure of hay as they can get in the dead of winter or in the you know, middle of April, beginning of April. That, feels like the dead of winter. Speaking of the weather, it is 15 degrees outside. Wind chill has it down to three degrees, which pretty much, unless it warms up a little bit today, pretty much guarantees that any calf that's born on the ranch today will probably end up bringing it into the barn, uh, at least to warm up, get dried off. So we don't leave that all up to mom and making sure that she gets it all done. And with the heifers, you're not even sure if they're gonna know it's their calf for a little while. Heifers and the, um, they'll definitely come into the barn if we do have a cow that has a calf today that might be a little bit different deal because we're going to hope that our cows kind of know better 
but it's still cold and we don't want a calf to freeze down when they're wet the cold hits them and it just can take them downhill really really fast so here's the open that we're the only ones that are cold today every time i open this gate i'm getting closer and closer to buying a mighty mule gate opener <laughs> someday i'm gonna get tired of opening the gates i guarantee it it's gonna happen for right now though you know what i can deal with that stuff okay heading out here in the cow pasture still nice and frosty we're heading out to get these cows fed and what I want to do is, like I said earlier, I want to draw them out of the barn. I want them to have to come down um, to grab some food. So they already see us. You can see them up there. They're working their way out of the barn, but they're probably thinking, hey, are you going to come feed us up here or not? And I think right about now they're figuring out that I'm probably not. So they're going to come down here and uh, be forced to come join us in the great outdoors. We're gonna start kicking our bale off. And uh, we'll welcome the cows to a little bit of breakfast. if you can see that all the way up there. I'll try to zoom in. Nothing better than calf zoomies in the morning. All right, <laughs> we are gonna uh, we're gonna head up here to the to the cow barn, mostly because I want to take a look and make sure nobody in here had a calf. So we're just gonna take a quick peek inside and uh, <laughs> make sure everybody's okay up there. Anybody stayed back? Didn't come to get food. There's probably a reason for it, but quick and easy way to tell is just to put eyeballs on the situation. And as we take a peek inside the barn here it looks like everybody went down for the buffet so that puts us uh moving on to the next part of our feeding extravaganza this morning uh we are going to go and check on the pigs uh get them some food we're also going to go and check on the goats and another pig petunia who's in there as well so let's head back to the shop and we'll get back to work. I do feel sorry for this uh, calf number four out here pretty much by herself. There's no other calves to play with and mom doesn't have any other moms to hang out with either. So she's been not the best mom in the world so far. She's left her calf in a few, sp seen a few spots. We've had to go and pick up her calf and take it back to her a couple times but once we get more cows out here that are having calves yeah you know she had her calf early we're not sure why uh, but the calf is obviously healthy and up and running around so that's what we can be thankful for and eventually there will be more calves out here in the triangle pasture with our 
mama cows, and uh, the little one will have somebody to play with. Um, we've got four pigs out in the corral. They were the ones that were too small last time we took pigs to slaughter. Uh, but they ended up staying here. They're actually going to be leaving here within about a week. So we're working on getting them fed up a little bit. They're actually on the finishing ration that we give to the cows as well. So we're going to grab a couple bucketfuls for them. Our pigs here get fed right over the fence. It's a slow morning. I don't have all day. I can't wait for you. <laughs> so I've got a treat here in the back of the gator for the goats and for Petunia. They should be super happy to see us. Turkeys. It's always nice to see the animals, cows, goats, whatever, chickens, uh, getting out and, and getting back outside into the sunshine after a, after a storm like this one. So, although it wasn't as bad as we thought it was gonna be, it still managed to keep everybody indoors for a couple days. Not us, however. We still had to go out. Although I did spend more time indoors over the last couple days than I have in a while. Hey kids, come on out, I got some treats for you. Look at that, yummy foods. So I'm trying to make friends with Petunia. Let's see if we can get her to come out. Maybe we can grab her something here. Here, Petunia, you want one of these? Hey, you wanna try that? Okay, maybe not corn on the top. Maybe you want, maybe you want something green. Do you like veggies? How if I put that right there? Then will you come try it? Well, now you want it. You could probably use a few vegetables. Or not. <laughs> I think Oreos and cheese puffs might have done her a little bit of a, a disservice. Either way, I don't think she's a big fan of today's breakfast. It's the vegetarian option. Heifers have been checked, cows have been fed, heifers got food, heifers got water, cows got water, chickens have water, goats have water. All the things are done so far. But now it's time for us to head across the road to our feedlot, which now, now that it's gonna thaw out here a little bit, we're gonna get in and uh, have a lot, of, a lot of time spent over there as we get everything uh, cleaned up from the winter. Um, what we have to do today is get them fed on that side as well and probably get their water turned on if i remember right last night it was a little bit low so we'll get their water turned on but first we're going to grab them their breakfast and their finishing rations which we go back into the barn for so i've got a cheat sheet up on the the grain bin tells me exactly how much grain to give these guys each and every day. Today, we are looking at A team and B team, 204 pounds for the A team and 150 pounds for the B team. So all I do is just throw that into some big old bins and uh, throw it in the back of the gator. The easiest way for me to do this is actually measure 50 pounds into each one of these muck tubs. Come on. Oh, 
all four of these loaded up and over to the steers. So we've got a little bit of drifting over here and both the A team and the B team are mixed together right now. So what we're gonna do is actually put feed in both of the feeders, but they're gonna kind of figure it out for themselves. I'm gonna fall on my butt. Okay, 200 pounds of feed. 200 pounds of feed goes in that one. We're gonna run back across the road, road and grab another 150 pounds to put down there because not everybody can fit in this feeder. Now, the other thing I'd normally do that I'm not gonna do this morning is I would give um, creep, which is a, think of, think of cake. <clears throat> this is cake. Creep is just a much smaller version. It's a higher protein pellet uh, that I would give to the C team or our backgrounders. Um, unfortunately, well not unfortunately, but because of the storm, we mix them in with the bulls and the horses and I can't really go out and give it to uh, them while they're mixed in because I don't want the horses to get into it. It's really high protein. Um, the horses will just gorge themselves on it. So. Until I get everybody sorted back out, I'm kind of off of that for just a little bit, which saves me a little bit of, uh, well, a few trips anyway. And uh, we can just finish up with these guys and their water. And, uh, and then we're done with morning feeding. Then we can go feed ourselves. So ideally, we would be, I think I've mentioned it before, but we would be using a TMR machine for this at this point, now that we're finishing more and more steers. Um, a TMR machine takes the place of our mixer, the grain bin, and kind of the gator too, because what it does is it, do, it mixes all the feed, all the ingredients together, and then you're able to drive along and pour it out for the cows directly into their bin. And you could pre-mix a whole bunch have it ready to go for the week, take it over, pull it, feed everybody. Much simpler way to do things. It is on our wish list. Uh, we'll see if that comes true. Um, for now, we're stuck with buckets and the grain bin and the Artsway mixer and doing it the way that we, well, the way we have to. Which I think is one of the hardest things that people have trouble figuring out about farmers and ranchers. And that's there's necessity, right? You have to have things done. Things have to be done, but not everybody can afford to go out and finance hundreds of thousands of dollars, especially nowadays for equipment and everything else. So there's a, a huge amount of just figuring it out, just getting stuff done and making it happen. And if you can get through the day, it might be a little bit more work, but it's not altogether a bad thing to just use your brain and figure it out maybe someday when you're old and can barely pick up a 50 pound tub yeah you're gonna have to figure out you know hey this has to work then uh, for the past long time i mean forever and ever farmers and ranchers that's about the time that the kid comes in and starts running things so maybe it'll just be mackenzie that ends up lifting the 50 pound tubs who knows not a bad way to look at things you know you figure it out as you go you make it work and uh you just be our steers here are gonna be mad because now i'm gonna put <laughs> this 150 pounds over here and now they're all over at the other feeder or trough or whatever you want to call it maybe somebody will come over come on there's some over here there's plenty to go around 350 some odd pounds of grain and hay and minerals and molasses <clears throat> can be a pain in the butt to move by hand every single day but for us, it's worth it.
And to our customers, those that buy the beef and pork from the ranch, I know it's worth it to them. And I think I've earned breakfast for myself. I'm gonna head in the house. Uh, we'll be back a little bit later on this afternoon. We'll take a look and see what else is going on around the ranch today. Uh, if we have any more calves, of course, we'll bring you along for that. But that's the morning, uh, an abbreviated kind of weird version of it. But uh, that's my morning. That's the main gist of every single morning, making sure everybody's got food, everybody's got water. That's the big thing. So now I get to take care of myself. Guys, we talk a lot about uh, cows that are acting suspicious, and uh, we call them sus cows, thanks to our kids. But uh, right now we've got a suspicious cow. Now we've had uh, our one calf born here from number 130 out here in the cow group. And they're still out here eating their food. I don't know where that little turd is at, but somewhere in here. And uh, we have another cow that's up on the hill that's warranting a look. So this appears to be number 100 and, I wanna say, 137. She's got a big old bag on her. This is that older cow that we talked about earlier. We thought might be getting close. I want her to kind of stick her out here, so. There you go, mama. It looks like she's our watch list cow of the day. All right, it's now been about an hour, about 45 minutes actually. Um, we're gonna head back out, check on this cow and see what she's doing. It's 137 white. Uh, she was just up over the hill. Looks like she dropped back on the other side. Maybe that cake didn't keep her there as long as I thought it would. So we're gonna go see how she's doing. There she is. As far as I can tell, she's looking for some place to have her calf. Uh, we've got another really clear sign of calving coming from her, the old telltale sign, and that is the swishing of the tail. She's doing that a little bit, and we'll show you what that looks like. Uh, she may stop doing it. No, you can see she's kind of swishing her tail back and forth. Uh, just a sign of irritation on the rear end there. Hey there, mama. You looking for some place to have your calf? Yeah, you are. Look at that bag, whoo! All right, nothing coming out yet. We're gonna say she's still got plenty of time. Now, cows can be in labor for a long time. Um, once we see that water bag come out, that's when we start worrying about things and wanna see things progressing. Uh, it's where they can stall out. But for right now, really, it's just a waiting game and we're just gonna hang out and see what she does. Um, I'm gonna head back to the house and get some lunch. Come back out, check on her again. And here we go again, out to check on number 137. See if we can work on number four, getting a, getting a playmate here. The sun is shining. The cows are starting to spread out a little bit, get away from some food. There she is. Still doing nothing. Hey, guess what? Uh, we're heading back out once again to go check on number 137 and see if she's working on having her calf. Looks like she's relocated a little bit, but not horribly. still got nothing and here we go again heading back out she's still down here at the end of the pond she's standing up again she's been up and down we'll take a look and see what she's up to now all right we got a bag look at that that is progress that's what we want to be seeing that bag is out now so we're just going to hang out out here in the field kind of keep an eye on her see how she's doing. 
All right, we've been sitting up here on the hill watching her and just trying to see what's going on. She's got a bunch of calves down there trying to help her. Might be our turn to head on down there. Let's see what we've got going on. There is a calf on the ground. We're gonna kinda try to move in here and get these kids moved out of the way. Come on, idiots, move. She did just have her calf. Look at that. Good job, mama. Good job. You're okay, mama. All right, we got the calf tag. Not the prettiest tag in the world, but It's a boy. And we grab our iodine. And give that umbilical cord a good old soak in here. Right inside the gator. And leave it to mom. There you go. Take care of your baby. We'll give them about a half an hour of privacy and then we'll come back out, check and see how they're doing. And one last trip heading out here tonight or this evening to uh, check on this little calf with you guys. Just born, number seven, little baby bull to 137 is mom. Calf is up and moving. We're going to swing on by and take a look. He's still right where he was when he was born. And we're going to have to keep a pretty close eye on him tonight. Uh, the temperature is supposed to get down to about 15 degrees. So if he has any trouble, I have no problem just snagging him and bringing him in the barn. Letting him spend the night in there and get warmed up. Especially now that he's up. He's with mom. And uh, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Hey, mama. You got a cute baby boy there with a messed up ear tag. Good girl. Good mama. You're at the wrong end though, kiddo. That, my friends, is what we like to call a happy ending. The calf is alive and well. And, uh, it continues here on the ranch. Calving continues, life continues, business continues. Speaking of, if you ordered beef or pork from the website this week, as you can only guess with the winter storm that just hit us, of course, on our shipping days, you're gonna end up waiting an extra week and I apologize for that, but really not much I can do about it. In fact, uh, I-80 just opened and 387, which is where your beef and pork would go as it heads down to Casper to get on a plane and head to you is still closed. So we couldn't get your meat to you if, if we wanted to, but that's okay. Uh, for me, it's part of having a small business. And also, you know what, I know you guys understand. It takes, it takes a village, right? And uh, if you wanna enjoy your beef and pork, <laughs> you're gonna have to wait just a little bit longer, but that's good, it'll make you appreciate it all that much more. Thanks guys for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, you guys are amazing. We've been reading comments here lately and it's just been, it's just been great. Carrie, uh, who was in yesterday's video and had a few issues with <laughs> a few issues would like me to convey that she's very, very thankful that you guys are so nice to her and uh, make her feel so welcome here on the ranch as well. So that's it for me today. And I'll see you next time right here on the 30 and 30 on our Wyoming Life. Mm -hmm.